Here's a short list of some of the things that solar panels can power. An electric bike, e-scooter, Tesla car, a golf cart, a boat, an RV range, a garage, a house, a cafe, a farm, and an office. If you have anything from this list, solar panels are a great choice for you. The ways to use them are endless. And in this video, we'll talk in detail about possible applications. Hey, what's up? It's Brian. Today, we'll talk about how to choose panels for any project that you like. We'll go over different types of solar systems and the panels you'll need for them. Let's start with the most popular application of solar panels, which is a home system. We've already covered the subject of getting solar panels for your home in detail in one of our previous videos, and you can go and check it out. The link to it is in the description below, and it's also right now on your screen. Still, I'm going to briefly explain the very basics. When it comes to solar panels for home, you should always pick monocrystalline panels, not polycrystalline or thin film ones. The problem with polycrystalline panels is that they are not very efficient and almost obsolete in a way. They come at slightly lower price than mono panels, but you'll need a lot more space to build a powerful system with them. It's easy to distinguish them. Poly panels are bluish in color and have a surface that sort of looks like marble. Mono panels are black, and if you can see solar cells, they have rounded edges. Thin film or flexible panels, which I've mentioned, aren't efficient either, and their lifespan is shorter. However, experts see a lot of potential in them and we'll get back to how they are used later. People generally use panels that put out from 350 to 450 watts for home. The more powerful the panel is, the larger it becomes, and it gets harder to fit on the roof. The size of your system depends on your electricity needs. The average size of a home system in the US is five to seven kilowatts, so you'll need, for example, 15 400 watt panels for a medium sized house. Panels aside, you also need an inverter or lots of micro inverters for each module. An inverter converts direct current, which is coming from panels to alternating current, which can be used for your home appliances. You can also add batteries to your system so that your house retains power during blackouts. If you don't wanna to spend too much time on installing your system, consider getting AC modules. A solar panel by itself produces direct current. An AC panel comes with a pre-installed microinverter and it converts direct current to alternating on the spot. These panels are slightly more expensive, but they are hassle-free. Plus, microinverters are slightly more efficient and last longer than standard inverters. Note that only a few brands offer AC modules, like Panasonic, LG, and Qcells. Now that we've covered home solar systems, let's talk about commercial ones. These are larger systems, and for this reason, they are often ground mounted. There's no clear definition of a commercial solar system, but if it gets above 15 kilowatts in size, it's more on the commercial scale of things. Here, people generally use larger panels that are up to 700 watt in power output. Bifacial panels are also getting really popular. They have an active rear side that gives up to 30% bonus production for each module. That is, if you install the panel correctly. A home solar system takes three to six weeks to construct, but commercial ones require months, where paperwork and inspections take the most time. Here, you would prefer to get your hands on Chinese solar panels, simply because they are the cheapest and you'll need lots of modules to build a powerful system. Look for brands like Jinko Solar, Ja, Trina, and Longai Solar. Solar panels also grow popular among boondockers and sailors. Their energy needs are relatively low, and you often can power everything you have in your RV or your boat in one or two panels. The size and type of panels will depend on your electricity needs and how much space you have available. Measure the roof of your RV, and you'll get an idea of which panels can go there. Many prefer to use thin film panels for mobile installations because they are light, flexible, and easy to install. You can simply use strong adhesives. Rigid panels are more powerful and they last longer, but they are heavy, more expensive, and require drilling to install. Keep in mind that warranties for rigid panels may be voided if you use the panels for an RV or boat because it's not their so-called intended use. If you go on hikes or trips into the wild a lot, consider a portable solar kit. 
A kit like this, you can unpack wherever. Turn it to the sun and charge your phone or laptop. What else can you do with panels? Some use solar panels to heat a greenhouse in the winter. You can just build a small system right next to it. If you have a solar system on top of your garage, you can charge your electric vehicles, scooter, bike, or even a car with solar energy. Some put a 400 to 500 watt solar panel on top of a golf cart and that increases its range. In fact, you can straight up replace the roof of a cart with a solar module. I've read about races for cars that are powered entirely by solar. These cars are often students' engineering projects. Possibilities are really endless. If you have a spaceship, you can put panels on your spaceship. They'll power some of its systems while it's orbiting around Earth. One more thing I want to touch upon are secondhand panels. Is it ever worth getting them? Uh, generally, no. There are several things about old panels that make buying them iffy at the very least. First, you can't be sure about their quality and condition. For example, micro racks, which is the most widespread defect, can be detected with the naked eye. Besides, the panels got cheaper and became much more efficient over the years. For instance, let's say you find a 10-year-old solar panel for half the price but the panels have already became 80% cheaper over the last decade on average. So in the end, you won't get a whole lot from getting an old product. Still, the discounts for used panels can be sizable. While I wouldn't recommend getting a whole system made out of secondhand panels in any case, one or two old modules can be good for a small DIY project in your garage. And that's it. These are the most popular applications for solar panels. And I hope you've learned something new from this video. Check out our blog where we talk more about different situations where solar panels can be good. Also, subscribe to our social medias. If you are new to solar, there's a lot of content for entry level solar enjoyers. In the description below, you can also find a link to a free A1 solar store guide on saving money with energy. That's it for me. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time.